Good morning, students. Our topic for today is about the bone, which is the main constituent of the adult skeleton. What are the functions of the bones? The bones provide solid support for the entire body. It also protects vital organs like how the skull protects the brain, the vertebrae protects the spinal cord, or the rib cage protecting the thoracic organs. The bones also multiply the forces generated during skeletal muscle contraction and transform them into bodily movements. The bone also stores minerals, maintaining the homeostasis of calcium and phosphate levels in the body, and the red bone marrow inside the bone undergoes hematopoiesis or blood cell formation. What are the composition of the bone? A bone is specialized connective tissue composed of the major cell types, namely osteoblast, osteocyte, and osteoclast, which we will discuss one by one later, and the bone matrix, which is a calcified extracellular matrix. Let us discuss the bone cells one by one. First is osteoblast. Osteoblasts originate from mesenchymal stem cells. One of its function is it synthesizes and secretes organic components of the bone matrix. Organic components include type 1 collagen, proteoglycans, and glycoproteins. Osteoblast is located at the surface of the bone matrix as a single layer of cuboidal cells. It has basophilic cytoplasm and is bigger than osteocyte. During matrix synthesis and calcification, there is a production of a layer of unmineralized collagen-rich material found between the osteoblast layer and the pre-existing bone surface before it matures and hardens as part of the bone tissue. We call that unmineralized collagen-rich material as osteoid. Next cell type is osteocyte. Osteoblast differentiates or matures to become osteocyte. It is enclosed singly within a space called lacuna. It is smaller than osteoblast and less basophilic. And one of the functions of osteocyte is it maintains the calcified matrix of the bone. Osteocyte has long dendritic processes occupying many canaliculi that radiates from the lacuna. These canaliculi with dendritic process serve as communication between osteocytes. And the third cell is osteoclast, which is described as a very large motile cells with multiple nuclei originating from the fusion of bone marrow derived monocytes. In areas of bone undergoing resorption, osteoclasts on the bone surface are found within enzymatically etched depressions or cavities in the matrix known as Hauship lacuna or resorption lacuna. Osteoclast is essential for matrix resorption during bone growth and remodeling, and its activity ultimately results to increase in serum calcium. We already discussed the three major cells of the bone tissue. Now let us discuss bone matrix. For the bone matrix, 50% of its dry weight is in organic materials. The most abundant inorganic material in the bone matrix is calcium hydroxyapatite. Other inorganic components of the bones are the following. On the other hand, majority of the organic component of the bone, about 90% of it, is collagen type 1. Other organic components are the following. Now let us discuss periosteum and endosteum. Periosteum is covering of the outermost or the most external surface of the bone, while the endosteum is the covering in the inner medullary cavity. Again, periosteum is the connective tissue that lines the external surface of the bone, and it has two layers, the outer fibrous layer and the inner cellular layer. The outer fibrous layer contains blood vessels and fibroblasts producing dense connective tissue containing collagen type 1. 
while the inner cellular layer contains osteoprogenitor cells, osteoblast, and bone lining cells. There is a special type of fiber made up also of collagen type 1 in the outer fibrous layer of periosteum. It is called perforating fiber or sharpie fiber as pointed with black arrows in the picture on the right. Sharpie fiber are used to attach muscle to the periosteum of the bone by merging with the fibrous periosteum and underlying bone. So that is sharpie fiber. Next is endosteum which is a thin covering of small trabeculae of bone matrix that projects into the bone marrow cavities. It contains osteoprogenitor cells, osteoblast, and bone lining cells. Now let us discuss the types of bone. There are two types of bones, compact or cortical bone, and spongy or cancellous or trabecular or medullary bone. Compact bone by the name itself is a dense bone near the surface. It is 80% of the total bone mass. While spongy bone by the name itself, it looks like a sponge and is found in the deeper areas with numerous interconnecting cavities. Spongy bone makes up 20% of the total bone mass. There is also a distinct distribution of compact and spongy bones in the long bones. In the epiphysis, which are the bulbous ends of a long bone, appreciate that it is composed of spongy bones covered by just a thin layer of compact cortical bone. For the diaphysis, which is the cylindrical growing in between, notice that it is almost totally compact with just thin region of cancellous bone on the inner central marrow cavity. For short bones, like wrist and ankle bone, there are cores of cancellous bone surrounded completely by compact bone. And for flat bone like skull, there are two layers of compact bone called plates separated by a thicker layer of cancellous bone called diplo. Now let us discuss the microscopic organization of the bone. There are two types of microscopic organization of the bone, lamellar bone and woven bone. Lamellar bone is mature and with matrix existing as discrete sheets while woven bone is in uniform bone and with randomly arranged components. Moreover, lamellar bone is characterized by multiple layers of lamellae. The highly ordered alternating organization of collagen fibers in lamellae adds greatly to the strength of lamellar bone. A lamella is a plate of bone that contains osteocyte housed within an almond-shaped lacuna. The structural unit of a compact bone matrix is called osteon or haversian system, which refers to the complex of concentric lamellae or bone layers surrounding a central canal or haversian canal that contains blood vessels, nerves, and endosteum. Just like what we mentioned earlier, there is concentric lamellae that contain osteocyte housed within an almond-shaped lacuna, and these osteocytes communicate to one another via canaliculi that contain dendritic processes. The outermost boundary of each osteon is a refractile line called cement line. There is also a communication between two central canals. That transverse communication or connection is called Vokman canal or perforating canal. In this picture, these are the central canals and these are the Vokman canals. Other parts of the lamellar bone that we need to mention are external circumferential lamellae, which are lamellae immediately beneath the periosteum, inner circumferential lamellae, which are lamellae around the marrow cavity, and interstitial lamellae, which are irregularly shaped groups of parallel lamellae between the osteons. This is a cut section of a lamellar bone. The concentric lamellae are contained within the osteons. These are the interstitial lamellae. These are the external circumferential lamellae. And these are the inner circumferential lamellae. And for the woven bone, 
It is non-lamellar and there is random disposition of collagen type 1 fibers and it has lower mineral content and higher proportion of osteocytes than mature lamellar bone. So it forms quickly but has less strength than lamellar bone. And it is also the first bone tissue to appear in embryonic development and in fracture repair. And now, let us discuss how the bones are being formed. Bone development or osteogenesis occurs by one of the two processes, intramembranous ossification and endochondral ossification. In intramembranous ossification, osteoblasts differentiate directly from mesenchyme and begin secreting osteoid. Examples of bones that are formed through intramembranous ossification are flat bones like skull, jaw, scapula, and clavicle. On the other hand, in endochondral ossification, there is pre-existing matrix of hyaline cartilage that is eroded and invaded by osteoblasts which then begin osteoid production. And this is the bone formation of most bones in the body. Let us talk about these two processes one by one. In intramembranous ossification, it starts with an appearance of an ossification center in the fibrous connective tissue membrane. Selected centrally located mesenchymal cells cluster and differentiate into osteoblasts forming an ossification center. Then bone matrix or osteoid is secreted within the fibrous membrane. So in this stage, osteoblasts begin to secrete osteoid which is mineralized within a few days. Trapped osteoblasts become osteocytes. Then Woven bone and periosteum are formed. During this time, the accumulating osteoid is laid down between the embryonic blood vessels, which form a random network. The result is a network of trabeculae. And then, bone collar of compact bone forms and red marrow appears. Trabeculae just deep to the periosteum thicken, forming a woven bone collar that is later replaced with mature lamellar bone. Spongy bone consisting of distinct trabeculae persists internally and its vascular tissue becomes red marrow. On the other hand, for endochondral ossification, it starts when chondroblasts produce a cartilage model that is surrounded by perichondrium. Then the perichondrium of the diaphysis becomes the periosteum and a bone collar is produced. Internally, the chondrocytes hypertrophy and calcified cartilage forms. Then, a primary ossification center forms as the blood vessels and osteoblasts invade the calcified cartilage. The osteoblasts lay down bone matrix, forming spongy bone. The process of bone collar formation, cartilage calcification, and spongy bone production continue. Calcified cartilage begins to form in the epiphysis. A medullary cavity begins to form in the center of the diaphysis. Secondary ossification centers form in the epiphysis of the long bones. The original cartilage model is almost completely ossified. An ossified cartilage becomes the epiphyseal plate in the articular cartilage. And in a mature bone, the epiphyseal plate has become the epiphyseal line and all the cartilage in the epiphysis except the articular cartilage has become bone. So let us discuss more on the histology of epiphyseal growth plate. There are five zones of epiphyseal growth plates, namely zone of reserve or resting cartilage, proliferative zone, zone of hypertrophy, zone of calcified cartilage, and zone of ossification. In the zone of reserve or resting cartilage, chondrocytes in their lacunae are distributed singly or in groups. In the proliferative zone, chondrocytes divide repeatedly and are arranged in vertical columns parallel to the long axis of the bone. In the zone of hypertrophy, Chondrocytes in the lacunae increase in size because of swelling of the nucleus and cytoplasm. Then, in the zone of calcified cartilage, hypertrophied chondrocytes degenerate forming thin plates of calcified cartilage matrix. And lastly, the zone of ossification where bony materials are deposited on the plates of calcified cartilage matrix. Again, 
zone of reserve or resting cartilage where chondrocytes are arranged singly or in group, proliferative zone where chondrocytes are arranged in columns, zone of hypertrophy when chondrocytes increase in size, zone of calcified cartilage where chondrocytes degenerate forming thin plates of calcified cartilage matrix, and zone of ossification, by the name itself, ossification, so bony materials are already deposited. And now, let's try to identify some structures. Identify the pointed cells of a bone tissue. If your answer is osteoclast for A, osteocyte for B, and osteoblast for C, then you get everything right. Next, identify the pointed structures. If your answer is cement line for A, osteocyte for B, canaliculi for C, central canal or haversian canal for D, and concentric lamellae for E, then you get everything right. How about this? Identify the pointed structures. If your answer is Volkmann canal for A, interstitial lamellae for B, periosteum for C, and endosteum for D, then you get everything right. And how about this? Identify the zones of epiphyseal growth plate. If your answer is zone of reserve or resting cartilage for A, zone of calcified cartilage for B, proliferative zone for C, zone of hypertrophy for D, and zone of ossification for E, then you got everything right. And that's the end of our lecture.